everyone can keep their uh, videos on. I would really want to see each one of you. So discussion is more uh, easy and I don't feel like I'm talking to, talking to walls. Can you please on your videos if you're comfortable? Mansi, Rajeshwari, Pooja, Nayana, Surbi, Shika, Ruchi, and I see Vipul. So we do have diversity here. Captain Shekhar. <laughs> Can I request all to please on the video if you're comfortable? Normally, even they have uh, some uh, network issues. Once they will put on the video, their network will become. No worries. Cool. Thanks, Mansi, for switching on the video. Fair enough. So let's get started. Let me share my screen. So before I share my screen, uh, if I can, uh, if you can have a quick round of introduction. Can you see my screen? If one of you can confirm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And you can call me Ashwini. I'm not that old. Just a joke though. Okay, great. A quick introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Ashwini Das Gupta, and I come with uh, approximately 15 years of experience into human resource. And I work with multiple MNCs like Amazon, Lehman Brothers, Nomura uh, in my past career. Now I've started my own entrepreneurship uh, wherein I am a certified trainer and a transformational coach. So my entire career has been in human resource. So please uh, keep asking me questions. I would definitely would love to share all my experiences, uh, which will help you in your progression. All right. So let's get started. Our today's conversation is about how to ace the interview to land in your dream job. Does this sound interesting? Hello, does this sound interesting to you all? Yeah, mom. Yes. Yes. I, I hope I'm audible to everybody. Yes, mom. You're perfectly audible. Okay, wonderful. So before we dwell into the subject or the uh, how you can be ace or how we can be ace uh, to get that job that we're looking for, first let's understand what is the objective of an interview. If I have to understand, say, uh, if Pooja, I can see your name on my screen right now. If I want to understand when you go for an interview, what is the objective for going for an interview? What is that you're looking for? I'm being getting selected. Okay. How about Rajeshwari? How about yours? Um, that is satisfied that the job would be off for us, our qualification. Sorry, I didn't get you. Uh, what did you say? If you could repeat. The job will be off for our qualification and uh, the what we want. Basically to get a job, right? That is impress and get that job. Clear uh, outlook that we have when we go for an interview. But the question here is, how can you have, how can you impress to get that job? Any thoughts you would want to share? Any experiences you, you, you would have in the past or maybe your friends or somebody in your, in your circle what are, what are those kind of conversations you've had where you felt, you know, yes, this is how I impressed the interviewer and got my objective done? Any thoughts around this? Anything? Mom, maybe clear knowledge and clear thought of understanding. Wonderful. Uh, that was Pooja, right? Great. Uh, any other thoughts? Good communication skills. Yes, that is one of the aspects, but not the aspect. It's one of the aspects. Any other? Our achievements. Your achievements, yes. I think that Nayana said that. Yes. And what could be, what could anything else be around? How would you impress the interviewer? One said communication skill, which is a physically you can see that we are talking. One could be non-verbal communication skills also through your eye contact, through your body language, your postures, your gestures, right? Knowing about the company. Yes, wonderful. Who said that? Pooja, wonderful. I'll, uh, to give you an example here, um, in my past experiences, right, when I was taking interviews and I've come across so many job seekers, they used to come for an interview and they didn't even know what the company was. 
do you think as an interviewer you would like yourself if somebody comes to your uh, organization for an interview and you you ask the person what is that you know about us and the person says i'm sorry i didn't get enough time to see how would you react do you think it will be very pleasant no of course not so the uh, perception would be built as he or she is not quite serious about the job he's just come he is, he doesn't know what he wants could be multiple perceptions we will build in our mind right yeah yeah so uh, the objective here way it's a, one we need to understand it two way deal that is between you and the interviewer but the interviewer will expect you to know more about the company you are visiting what is the role and responsibility how are you seeing your career path what is that you are aspiring for and others like uh, pooja said nayana said you know knowing about the company the values the belief system are they in alignment to your own so these are the objectives when you go for an interview which you need to understand yourself once you understand this aspect the next elements which we are going to unfold now gets easier to understand all right okay so next i can see two people entered the waiting room admit admit okay great now the key elements here to ace an interview one is a swot analysis we will go in depth on each of the aspect which will help you understand the second is a positioning the third is research about the company and the job interview etiquette and salary negotiation okay now the first the swot analysis how many of you really understand the concept of swot analysis anyone would like to share the experiences or anything that you are aware of it could be anything nobody is going to uh, judge here we are just learning right now so there's something i will learn from you there's something you will learn from me so let's have that exchange of conversation all right so who is ready to go who can say tell me something about swot analysis anyone Mom, yes yeah. may i yes. tell me mansi go ahead mansi please mam swot analysis basically stands for strength weakness opportunity and threat okay. this is uh, used to know an individual okay individual what it's a is it about swot about yourself or swot about somebody else i'm talking with respect to both right now in respect of an interview uh, then the interviewer ask about the swot analysis so uh, the interviewee uh, has to give his or her spot analysis okay so let's go one step back mans you wonderful thought uh, i appreciate you share your views yes you are right but we will go one step back now okay because we are talking about how one can get is in an interview to get that job so before even i apply to a job if i am a candidate and if i want to apply to a job it's first of all is very important that i do swot on myself it's not about anybody else it's about myself my own strengths my own challenges which are weaknesses my own opportunities and my own threats now how can you do that each one of us have our own strengths are we in agreement everybody has some or the other strengths some are good in talking some are good in excel some are good in technology some are good in public speaking and so on and so forth am i right yeah ma'am okay and we also have our own challenges for example i am not technical savvy as a person i am not comfortable with technology but does that stop my work i can no yes because how am i doing that by enhancing my skills on technology then comes the opportunities we all have a potential in abundance we just have to look at it and threats we all have our own competitors we do have right yes so when you do your own swot analysis the strength and the weaknesses i wouldn't want to term weakness here i will say challenges or improvements because every weakness is an opportunity for us 
the moment you say weaknesses it turns out to be a little negative in the mind which should not be the case hence will term as challenges or some area of improvements so strength and challenges are something which are internal to us that is something we can work around so if my strength is in public speaking i will look for opportunities where i can use the skill for example it would be training it could be coaching it could be motivational talks and so on and so forth am i right now my challenge would be for example let's take an example i am good at making decisions but my challenge here is when i'm making those decisions i am not doing enough research can that challenge be an area of improvement for me yes ma'am i'm consciously start working on my challenge by reading lot of articles which in, which will support my decisions when i will have facts i'll have data to talk about that's how you work on your challenges as well it could be in, in any area so if so i'll give an example of myself few years back i was very uncomfortable talking in front of people i had major fear uh, in public speaking i used to just get scared i used to sweat you know i used to get nervous i used to turn pink then i was one day realized this is not going to help because i wanted to get into that arena of me talking to people and how could i do that was that something doable it was right so i did some courses i went to some courses where it allowed me it gave me a platform to talk in front of people i kind of came out of my comfort zone and this is something of consciously we need to enhance ourselves that's how you work on your challenges strengths anyways you're good at but you need to keep enhancing and adding more layers to it so that you stand out among the other applicants that is other candidates who are uh, i'm sorry somebody is asking for admission one second let me know the first page so it's very important one once we realize our strengths we need to keep enhancing and adding the layers so that you become more if you kind of stand out among the other applications who have applied for the same job challenges something we need to understand and figure out which is which is the area i am not doing well and there's no challenge that you can't beat every challenge you can overcome only if you want to there are ways which we need to figure it out then comes the opportunities as a candidate we need to understand the opportunities we have in the external environment so opportunities and threats are the external environment opportunities would be how is the economy doing how is the organization doing for example this xyz organization and you are interested in that to apply to the job in that particular firm and you come to know the organization is in the expansion plan when i say expansion plan meaning they are expanding their branches in different cities different countries and when that happens obvious thing is they are going to hire more people am i right so that becomes an opportunity for you so now you have done a survey of the external environment and you know these out of 20 companies these top 5 companies is where i want to apply because they are matching your strengths they are also matching your uh, challenges which you think you can deal with and opportunity of course because they are expanding or there are some mergers happening which is opening the doors for new applicants now the threat would be say for example due to this covid the economy has gone down drastically are we in agreement yes ma'am okay great so because economy has gone down it's been a threat to all of us we kind a lot of people have lost their jobs uh, the workflow is not too much as it was before but how people have converted this to opportunity any any thoughts there's nothing right and wrong just say whatever your mind says it's okay we all are in the learning phase right now any thoughts that you have when you see how this threat has converted lot a lot of people have converted this into opportunity how do you think we have done that 
Um, they got get their businesses. Sorry, can be a bit louder, please? They have started their own business. Yes, excellent. And? Mom, people got plenty amount of time to work on themselves and to learn something new. Super. Anything else? Any other thoughts? Fair enough. So, like Mansi and Pooja said, yes, it, uh, uh, very right. All the training, for example, from offline where you were doing physical trainings have moved to online trainings. There's, there's nothing that has uh, seen people which is impossible to do, right? People have utilized... And you all have done, I'm, I'm believing that. Am I audible to you all? Because my network is showing low a little bit. We are, Okay. So this is the importance of SWOT analysis. So before you even look for a job, first, it's important that we study ourselves internally and externally, and then marry this to the job that we're looking for. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. And by doing this, the biggest advantage you're going to have is when you get on the table of having that interview conversation, you will be pegged high because you will have so much of information to give out. You will have so much because you would have done so much of study, so much of research, you will have so much of data to back your conversation, which is just going to add a feather in your cap. And interviewers really like this. They don't like Candice coming and just sitting there and doing a yes, no kind of a conversation. They expect you to know how the market is trending. They expect you to know what is going good, what is not going good. And why they do that is because when you enter the organization, they expect you to value add to the existing team that they have already. All right, the next is positioning. Now, what is positioning for you? What do you really understand by this term positioning? Anyone would like to attempt? Uh, I'm not sure if Prashant is saying something. You're on mute if you are. Prashant, can you hear me? Okay, let's get moving. So positioning is nothing in layman's language, it is branding. We are our own brands. How we brand ourselves is in our control. So it is a very, very important aspect how you're branding internally and externally. Let me just change the slide. Yeah, can you see the slide? Yes. Yeah, so how you brand yourself, be it online or be it offline. And the branding has to be inconsistent all the time. I have seen few applications, you know, they write, I love partying and they, uh, they want, and they do share those links with us. When you're on a professional platform and if you write, hi, this is Ashwini Das Gupta, I love partying, wish me on this day, I was born. How would it come across? Do you think it would look really uh, appealing to the interviewer or to the organization? Anyone? No, ma'am. If you go and check a lot of Insta, uh, Insta, uh, the profile space, the way they've written, I've come for so many applications. They say, please visit my Instagram. Why would I visit your Instagram? Unless you're an entrepreneur, I wouldn't want to. The professional platforms are typically recognized, uh, the ones are recognized are LinkedIn. You can go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an amazing platform where you know you need to position so well uh, and uh, so well that it's actually calling out your skills, your strengths, your success factors, and your credentials. They need to call out without even you having say, uh, saying any word on that. Am I right? And the messaging has to be consistent across all the portals. For example, be it Nokri, be it Indeed, or be it uh, LinkedIn, 
or any other such platforms, your messaging has to be very, very clear, you as a candidate. What is that you want people to look into? What are your strengths? Are you really calling out your strengths or you're just writing a, a biography of yourself? There's a difference. It has to be to the point where people can really understand what you're trying to say. And that is how the recruiters and the managers reach out to you directly. Any experiences you would want to uh, share with me on positioning or how you branded yourself? Anyone? Okay, no worries. So like I said, positioning is nothing but branding uh, oneself and in such a way that it, it imprints in the hiring manager's mind. So whenever they click on your profile, it is very common before you even step into the organization premises, the HR and the manager would have seen your LinkedIn profile by default. They might not tell you, but they would have definitely seen and build an impression already. So your impression building starts the way you position yourself. I'm sure in a few of your previous sessions, you would have learned how can one create first impression, right? So your impression starts by building your LinkedIn profile or your Nokri how the formatting of your resume, the grammar, the English, it all comprises to your positioning and how you're branding. Any questions around this? The most common question when it comes to positioning, you, you, you will experience is, why should I hire you? What will be your answer if someone questions you, why should I hire you? It, it sounds a very simple question actually, but trust me, you really have to think when you're answering that. A lot of applications I've seen in my past, they were not able to say or tell me, why should I hire them? Anyone would like to give an attempt to why should, suppose for example, uh, Roshni or Pooja or somebody else comes to an interview and this question comes to you, why should we hire you Pooja? So what will be your answer? Ma, maybe I'll tell about myself that what are the strengths or what will be different, uh, will be helpful for the company. Exactly. So you need to call out your skills, not overselling it. But calling out your skills and all this should be uh, shown and seen on your uh, online applications also. That could be your LinkedIn profile, could be your Indeed, if you're an active member on Glassdoor, everything should call out that this is what Pooja is all about. So it's, uh, the question is like, you know, how do I hire you? And a lot of people, trust me, a lot of people fumble, they don't even know. I've also got responses like, because I'm good. I can only smile at those answers. It sounds a little immature, but people do say that you should hire me because I am good. I'm okay to travel. That's not how the answer should be. The answer should be typically aligning to your strengths and how you're going to help the firm to grow more further. So it's a growth for you and to the organization hand in hand. That's how the answer comes across. Fair enough? Then moving on next is the research. The, the, the third element, research of the company and the job. Now, why do you think this is important when you go for an interview? Because it's a very common question the HR or the manager will ask you. So tell me about my own company, XYZ, say for example, an XYZ company, and they say, okay, what do you know about us? You just can't say, you know, for example, if you should go to an investment bank, uh, like say, uh, Namura. I've, have you heard about this company, Namura? Anyone has heard? Okay, let's take a common name. Like for example, Amazon. I'm sure you would have heard about Amazon. You have, right? Now, for example, you go for a company by name Amazon and the HR says, what is that you know about Amazon? You can't be just saying it's a retail organization, you know, they are our number one uh, company founded by Jeff Bezos. The HR is not looking for those answers. Everybody knows that. What is different that you know about the company is what they will expect. So you need to know the background. You need to know who are the competitors. You need to know what are the values, what are the belief systems. 
you also need to know what how are they performing financially they might not ask you but they will expect you to know because when in the discussion uh, there is a conversation happening on the trending of the organization we as a candidate cannot say i'm sorry i don't know some basic you need to know that you should know that so for example amazon has got 14 principles i'm not sure how many of you have seen it but if you ever get a chance please visit their website they've got 14 principles for example and the interview selection process is around those 14 principles that talks about the culture of the organization and that speaks about the value system of the organization just i remember few of them that is invent and simplify there is something called customer centric bias for action and many more 14 as such right and when a candidate goes for an interview there every interviewer is been given two competency so the interviews are competency based interviews for the role you have applied for so every interview interviewer will check on two competencies from the principles of the firm itself and why do they do that very simple they want you to align with the culture of the organization for example say there is one of the principle by name bias for action what does it mean it simply means being proactive and having speed in your work okay if i don't have speed and if i am not proactive i will not be able to survive in that organization because the the uh, the way they function the way they put you on task you need to be in that same pace of speed if you are not you are going to fail that is how the firm function and that applies to every firm some companies will have one of the main uh, principles integrity and if our value system is not matching to theirs we are going to fail you will not enjoy the firm and the firm will find it very difficult to work with you so hence it's very important that you know before we go for an interview you need to have the complete study of the organization related to the background were there any mergers acquisitions happening were there any something which i need to know how is the company progressing and where all will you get the information any idea where do you think you can get the website sorry the website of the company yes and any other uh, sources you think you can find the information oh uh, ma'am wikipedia yes and linkedin yes and many more such right you can also i don't know if you know about this a uh, glass door okay any company name it you will find a review in that website and who gives the review the employees themselves who are already working or who have already quit and gone so you can find all the information of the company how the company is doing what's the pay uh, pay scale of the company how is the culture how are people what is the dress code everything you will get the information the other source could be asking the hr directly and no hr will say i will not give you they have to give you nobody can say i'm sorry prashant i will not give you they will give you all the information which is publicly available you can also yes. go to for example if you are applying through a executive search firm like a third party vendor if you are applying through them even the third party can help to give all the information of the company what is the role about how are the managers they also can tell you how the manager is is he bad is he tough is he good is he easy going all the information is available nowadays you can go on link and check the profile of the interviewers well in advance so somewhere subconsciously you have only built a rapport with the interviewer because you know something about them and when you start talking to them you are able to relate that's the best trick you can use is tried and tested personally by myself so whenever i was called for an interview i used to always make sure i read something about the interviewer so i don't feel as if i'm talking to a stranger as humans we're a little uncomfortable talking in the strangers right so this is the way oh, you, yeah so this is the way you will have, do a trick on yourself know something about the interviewer basic it's okay his past experiences his college his schooling you never know you might have passed from the same college and you can say hey you know what prashant we uh, we share the same college and that's where the ice breaking starts 
and the constant gets more easier then that is that comes to a company research now coming on the job research now what is on the job research it's about qualification years of experience what is the years of experience are they looking for am i eligible for that maybe for example they're talking about 15 years and i'm i just come by maybe 5 to 6 years does it even make sense for me to apply there the hr might not call you because they're very clear that they want 15 years of experience or above example okay then location now if for example mumbai mumbai is a vast city so when i say the job uh, work location is malad and i'm staying somewhere in andheri my okay to travel from andheri to malad knowing the traffic knowing congestion the public transport a lot of aspects we need to look into it also right then the work timings does this include any night shift or graveyard shift or is it a regular job 9 to 6 or 9 to 5 now there is none of the jobs are 9 to 5 by the way but yeah but as per the rule of government it has to be minimum 40 hours per week okay then does this involve a travel that means a domestic travel or international travel and if it is yes are you okay as a candidate are you okay to travel frequently literally living in the bags So, for example, there was a time uh, when I had got a call from one of the company to uh, lead the function on the campus highway, and I lead. Uh, I reached a level in my career where I was okay to say no because I didn't want to travel. So I said, "I'm sorry, it doesn't match with my interest level because it involves a lot of traveling." So I wanted a job which is within the vicinity of Mumbai, which makes me easier, and I'm kind of always at home and not living in the living in the bags. so that is something you need to look at then roles and responsibilities what is a job all about what are they expecting from you and is your expectation also matching with the firm's expectation they need to marry to each other it can't be one sided then the growth path as a candidate i would want to know my growth path i don't want to be stuck in the same level for 4 5 years so you need to ask the hr or the manager or both in fact how do you see my growth path here so they will give you the hierarchy now you are here then your next level will be this and for to build that gap this is what you need to do so there will be proper career graph conversation that will happen with you and you need to do that even before you say yes to an offer most often in an excitement we go and say oh yeah i am very excited about the job but a lot of candidates i have seen they don't have this discussion you need to have it if i stay in the firm for say 4 years how do i see my growth you need to ask such questions to the hr and the manager how do you see how do you see i grow okay now that we know i don't have the skill or maybe i'm not strong in that skill will the firm help me with some trainings how will the firm help me build those uh, gaps which uh, which is which we see in the interview feedback and they will share the feedback with you right then the compensation range so every company has a range for every level every job that you apply i will not get too technical but just to make you understand so every firm will have a job family under those job families you have different levels the same for example one job family will take as a manager level operations manager okay the operations manager is a job family under that you have different levels of manager grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 and grade 4 every grade will have a different salary range it will not be same as grade 2 why only because the span of control of that role differs and the competency required also differs So, for example, if grade one needs a experienced person of say five years, grade two will need an experience of ten years. So, there's a gap of competency and experience also. Are you with me on this? Yeah, ma'am. Exactly. Yeah. So, when you apply for a job, you need to do a research of all of this. Especially the compensation, the growth part, you might not know in uh, in the external environment. you can ask these questions directly to hr um, and the hiring manager 
the compensation can ask only the hr and not the manager because these are confidential information they might not share it with you and now for the question is when do you ask this especially the compensation rate was a very 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 sensitive discussion and lot of hr will not be comfortable in the initial step itself the question will be we have not even checked your competency and you are asking me how much i can pay you this doesn't go well uh, with most of the hrs so you have to be very cognizant and there's a way certainly you can ask uh, once you have all the clarity then you can ask uh, do let me know if you are comfortable or uh, do you have any range for this role then they might they, they will not give the numbers out to you but at least they will give you fair idea all right so this is a two way thing knowing about the company and also knowing about the job both are equally important all right now going on the next now interview etiquettes did you ever think there would be uh, something called interview etiquettes any idea what interview well it's all there on the slide right now but have you experienced or have you ever had these discussions uh, with your friends or your family members where they felt and they came you know what i was late that's why you know i didn't get the job have you come across such a kind of reasons and feedbacks no okay fair enough so there are certain ba uh, basic interview etiquettes which are not negotiable no company will be comfortable in negotiating on these etiquettes number 1 being punctual you have to be on time your interview actually starts from the time you reach the office assuming you are reaching uh, reaching late for an interview you need to let the hr know well in advance Uh, saying hey uh, i'm going to be late by 10 minutes for whatever your own reasons are stuck in traffic or you missed the bus or, or whatever those, those reasons are you need to tell them well in advance by doing so what it shows is you are a very serious person you know what you're getting into it looks as if you're very matured you are very responsible by not informing the hr and just landing there and and on the premise you're saying hey i'm sorry or i'm late that doesn't go well with anybody all right so being punctual is extremely extremely important and to be on time you need to work a little backwards get the location of the uh, uh, location of the interview well in advance go check the map and see what is the approximate distance you, you would need to commute basis that you need to venture from your home so that you are reaching on time all right then the then comes a job interview checklist what is according to your job interview checklist can anyone tell me what do you think it should be uh ma'am experience uh experience of uh for the uh, for which the company is looking for the candidate okay and and uh, skill okay and and uh, attitude attitude uh, of a person uh, of a employee towards the company okay but that does not fall under checklist that is something you need to show so what i mean by attitude but yes the rest of the uh, the the parameters you've mentioned are apt they're correct so your interview checklist will have your portfolio when i say portfolio it means your past experiences uh, extra number extra copies of your resumes it could be your passport size photograph it could be your credentials could be your honors your certificates licenses degrees everything reference checks recommendations so you can make a folder and you get those organized folder you need to slip all of these things there so anything they ask you have everything handy by doing so it looks more professional you look more organized and it looks uh, as a, as if someone who's very proactive who's very eager so that's why you kept everything in order to provide as and when required okay then comes the important aspect is interview body language 
Now, what is this all about? Do you think it is necessary to have a good body language? But what is body language? Anyone? Ma'am, bo uh, uh, body language is also play a key role to while giving interview because yes. uh, uh, while giving interview, we uh, how well we connecting with the interview, that's the good impact on the interviewer. Very well said, Prashant. Extremely uh, right what you're saying. So I'll just move on to the next slide that will help you know what is body language. Can you see my slide clearly? Now, interview body language covers multiple parameters. Your posture. The first one is your posture. How do you sit? Are you slouching? You know what is slouching? If you can, can you see me clearly? Slouching is like this, you know, with a hunch on your back. Are you sitting slouching like this or you're sitting erect, straight, with the back, back straight? That, so these are the interview postures. They will observe even when you're sitting in the reception. These are all done by the HR. You might not know, but they observe everything. How you walk, how you sit, how you welcome the other person, how are you communicating, how are you shaking your hands. All of these come, come under body language and everything is being observed. Your energy level, are you enthusiastic or no? Or are you dull? Are you bored? You're looking tired. So before you even enter the in interview room, my recommendation would be first go to the washroom, freshen up, feel good, maybe spray some perfume on yourself, eat a mint, and get come back in charge because traveling can kill somebody. It happens with me at least. So whenever uh, in past, whenever I've traveled for an interview, I should get exhausted because uh, Bombay travel is not little easy. If anybody or one of you are from Bombay, I'm not quite sure. It's really not easy to travel if you're going via public transport. So it used to drain me out. I used to look very tired, a, a lot of exertion on my face. So even before I could go in the reception, I should first go to the washroom. You know, feel fresh, uh, fresh fresh enough and then wash my face, uh, spray some perfume and then come back in charge and in control and then ask the uh, reception, can I now meet a uh, so-and-so person? And then go and sit in the reception. The second aspect is mirror the interviewer's body language. What is this? Have you come across this term of mirroring? Have you ever come, uh, come across this? Do you know what is mirroring? Anyone? Ma'am, while giving the interview, when the interviewer will, would be interested in the candidate, they mm -hmm. uh, clearly look into uh, the candidate eyes and uh, they will hear the uh, candidate uh, all, you know, uh, we can say all talks and uh, experience uh, very carefully. Else, if if uh, they will not interested, they will do something else. They will uh, can they can make a uh, roll the pants and it is etc. Okay, so Prashant, uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts. But mirroring is something wherein you copy somebody. So, for example, and mirroring can happen at all uh, gestures, body language, postures, the tone of the voice, the energy level, everything we can copy. And I will recommend we should do that in a very subtle way. Not like, uh, can one of you just on the video, I can just show how mirroring is done. Anyone who is comfortable. Well, this is a very, very important aspect. Why? Because subconsciously, we are building a rapport with the interviewer. And that is why mirroring plays a great, great deal in interviews. Or it could be any, anything, actually. Even tomorrow when you start working, you can also do this to your manager as well. It's a subconsciously, you're telling the person, I am okay the way you are. I really like you. And we, you know, mostly humans like to hire people whom they really like. It's very common, right? And subconsciously, we're playing with their mind. It's like, you know, you know an iceberg, how the subconscious conscious mind functions? Are you aware? 20%, the tip of the berg is only visible. There's 80%, which is a subconscious mind, which is where 
is it works more faster than your conscious mind. That these are certain signals which your subconscious mind gives to the other person. So, for example, um, uh, say for example, uh, can just one of you on the video so it will be easier for me to show how the mirroring happens. Anyone can just on the video. Nobody's comfortable. Okay, no worries. So, uh, mirroring is typically done in a way, say for example, I'm a, uh, uh, if, okay, who's that, Prashant? Thanks, Prashant, for uh, your cooperation. Okay, now, Prashant, if I'm the, you are the interviewer in this case, and I'm the candidate, all right? You can yeah. do some, gesture, just do some subtle gestures now. You need to do with your hand. I'm not able to see your uh, hand. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you've done something like, okay. Yeah, now I can see you. Okay. Like this. Yeah, I can see you now. Now you can do some gestures. Anything with your, yeah. Okay, so you did something like this, right? When you were talking to me, you did this. I will not immediately do it as a candidate. So what I will do is, while having the conversation, I will just touch myself here. Very subtly and very naturally, the interviewer will not even come to know. So for example, if I'm the interviewer and if I'm moving my hands while talking, even Prashant will, when he's talking, he will start moving his hand. So that way you are actually mirroring whatever I'm doing, not copying uh, exactly the way I'm doing. Otherwise you're going to make me very conscious, make me feel very conscious. Your the idea is to play with the subconscious mind and you, you need to match the energy of the interviewer. So for example, if I'm very energetic right now, you can't be telling me, hi Ashwini. If I'm saying, hey, hi Prashan, good to see you. So your energy should match my energy, that is mirroring. You can't then say, hi, Ashwini, I'm okay. You getting the difference? You have to say, hey, Ashwini, I'm good. I'm good, good to hear you. So the energy has to match the tonality, the intonations, the way we talk, our body language. If I shake my hand with you, the same energy should come. You can't be then doing, I remember one of your guest speaker spoke about different handshakes, right? It has to match. Then you can't give a fish phone kind of a handshake like this. It has to be with the same energy. That is mirroring. And trust me, it plays a big role across the spectrum of your life. Be it your, within your family or if you want to build rapport, this is an excellent way to build rapport. Try doing it. Then comes what to do with your hands. We just don't know what to do with our hands when we're in the interview. Should I keep on my lap? Should I fold them? Do, did you, can you see my body language? Are you able to see it? We just don't know what to do with our hands. Should I keep like this or should I sit like this or you know, keep my hands on the lap? What do, what do we typically do with our hands? Any Anyone would like to comment? Anyone? So the um, basic, yeah, okay. yeah, tell me. Um, the basic will be uh, putting our hands on a lap. Okay. Otherwise, uh, our palms on the table. Okay. Uh, maybe that's enough. Instead yeah. of playing with hands. Exactly. So, if you can see the pictures here, can you see the uh, cursor moving? So, this is how you keep your hand. If you don't know what to do with it, just keep it like this on a can you just see it? I'll just show. Can you see it? Yes, ma'am. So, this is how you will keep. And even if you're moving your hands while talking, don't move so much it, as if it becomes a distraction. Like, you know, talking like this. A lot of people, they play with their hair. They do like this. Then they'll keep doing fidgety with the jacket. Or they'll be like, like this. Or how, the women especially, right? They do keep doing like this. Or they adjust their uh, necklace. Or they keep playing with their watch. Don't do all that. If you don't know what to do with your hand, just keep it on the table like this. Keep it straight. And then talk eye to eye. Got it? It's, so, uh, if you see this uh, picture here, he just simply kept it on the table, doing nothing, which is also a good deal. Then comes, be aware of your legs. That is this picture. Now, how do you, which one you think is the apt 
uh, poster, yeah, when you go for an interview. And remember, okay. this starts from the reception, okay? Not in the interview room. Start from the reception. So tell me. Fourth one. Fourth one, this lady you're saying? Yes. Okay, Vipul, anybody else would like to give a try? Okay, fair enough. So Vipul, you're right. You can go either for the third one or the fourth one. So men especially will sit like this and women will sit like this. So if you see, let's go one by one, the men or the man over here, he has crossed his leg at the ankle. So if this is the ankle of yours, you need to cross it ankle to ankle like this. You can try that uh, if you are comfortable to do that right away. That's how you will sit and the women, if you see this lady here, she has slackened her feet on the floor and closed her legs. Can you see that? Yeah. So these are the right postures to sit while you're in an interview, be it in the reception or in the interview room, however comfortable you are. Even if the interviewer gets very casual the way he's sitting, you still need not change your position. Because when you're formal, nothing can go wrong. I remember I'll give you one example. Uh, I will not name the company. Uh, so while it was not an interview, but I had a meeting with a, a senior technical person. And you know, how did he sit? So he actually put his both the legs on the table. And I was sitting where I'm sitting right now. This is how I was, uh, I was sitting. And when he did that, I was a little bit started and I went behind. My body language was I just pushed myself behind. That made me very uncomfortable. Do you think that was professional? No. No, right? Yeah. So one, I'm a lady. Even if I'm not, even if I was uh, uh, same gender, you're still not supposed to do that. That shows you're disrespecting the person. So even if you're mirroring the interview, how he's sitting, that you can do once you have built the rapport. Once the ice has been broken among both of you, only then you start subtle mirroring of the interviewer. Okay? And mirroring does help break the ice. It's an amazing way to build rapport. Then the eye contact. Now, when you're doing an eye contact, you don't have to stare like this, making the person feel so uncomfortable. Just a soft gaze you need to have. Like you look at the person, then look down, or you know, constantly keep doing that. You don't have to constantly stare like this. That can really intimidate the person. What if I just stare at you like this? How would you feel? Will you be okay? Will you be okay? No. Why? It's okay, I'm just looking at you, no? What's the problem? Why do you feel not... embarrassed? Why would you feel embarrassed? I'm not doing anything. I'm just staring at you. Why it makes uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, right? As humans, we don't like to feel uncomfortable. So whenever you're looking at your uh, at anybody during the interview or having any conversation with anybody, you need to have a soft gaze. That means you're looking at the same time, you're not even looking at the person directly. And that helps build the rapport much more easier. It's much more easier to build the rapport. All right? So when you look into somebody's eyes and talk, it builds trust. There's certain level of comfort level. Why? Because the other person feels Ashwin is keen, uh, keen and showing interest to what I'm saying. The certain level of trust which is reflected in your eyes. But only thing you need to be careful, you don't have to stare with your, you know, making those eyes big and looking at the person. All right? Now, then comes a monitor your voice. What is this all about? Anyone? Anyone would like to share what is monitor your voice? The voice modulation. 
Yes, exactly, Mansi. Bang on. Any other thoughts? What is monitoring your voice? Mom, maybe taking care of your pitch. Yes, and voice modulation, pitch, and is there something else we need to look at it? Frequency. Frequency in the voice. The speed. I mean. Is it the music system that the frequency goes up and down? Those are called as yeah. intonations. Don't uh, the right word to use is intonations. Okay. okay. So intonations, the rate of speech. Yes, some. I think one of you said Mansi or Pooja said that the rate of speech. That is the speed and the pace. You can't be talking so fast. The person is not able to understand at all what you're talking. So you need to match this with your interviewer. So the mirroring will work here also. So if if I'm talking fast, then you as a candidate can say, "I'm sorry, I'm not able to understand what you're trying to say." It's okay to say that. So you, when you are talking to the interviewer, your voice modulation, your tonality, your pitch, your rate of speech, the intonations, they all need to be synchronized to me. But it can't be monotone. So, for example, my name is Ashwini Das Gupta. I'm MBA qualified, and I work here and here. And these are my success. These are monotone. There is no enthusiasm. There is no excitement. Everything is same. It's all flat. Then, if I say, well, "I'm Ashwini Das Gupta, and I'm pastor from Narsimhanji, and my successes are," you saw the difference. So that will create interest in the interviewer also because you are emphasizing where your success factors are. You are also emphasizing when you have not achieved something. So, for example, if I failed in one of the project, I'm not going to say, "You know what? I failed into this." I'm going to have a smile, but you can say, "Yeah, I know there were some challenges, and hence, uh, I believe I couldn't meet the deadlines." So my tonality also changed, my expressions changed. All that we cover in this get covered in this. Any questions around this? Any questions? No, ma'am. It's very much clear. Okay. So these are few uh, etiquettes you need to look at in body language, interview posture, mirroring, what to do with your hands, your legs, eyes, and your Voice, all right. Now going back to the previous slide. Now the next question is: How should one respond to the interview question? How should you respond? How should one respond? Confidently and honestly. Okay, very good point, Mansi. And relevant to the question, it should not be other than the question. Yes, very very relevant, Pooja. Thank you. And okay, uh, thanks for adding uh, Mansi and Pooja. Yes, you need to be very relevant to what has been asked. It's not a storytelling that you go all over the place. Okay, it is not at all that. You just answer very precisely. Concise and to the point. Because always remember, the more information you give when not asked, you're putting yourself in the trouble. Especially if you don't have facts. If there's no data to support, then you are getting into trouble. So I've seen a lot of candidates in my career. They use those uh, high-fi English and uh, technical terms. And when we ask them in detail, they get stuck. So never get into that unless you are confident. Please go ahead and do it. But if you are not, and when you feel I'm not sure, no, maybe, may not be, don't get into it. So be very precise. Be very clear what you're trying to say. Don't fumble with your words. It's okay to use simple words, simple language. Nobody is going to judge on English there. no body trust me nobody has the time also as far as you're able to communicate clearly like how we are talking today that's more than enough 
literally more than enough. We don't even have to think if we fortify use Oxford Dictionary English, nobody's bothered there. All that you know, even the HR might know, not know what the meaning it has actually. <laughs> Seriously. So just go with simple English, simple verbiage. Don't be too lengthy in your conversation, just to the point, very relevant to the question. And if you have not understood what the uh, interviewer is asking, be free to ask what, uh, sorry, I didn't get what you're saying. Could you please repeat yourself? Don't assume this is what you've understood. Or you can also paraphrase the question. You can just say, hey, Ashwini, uh, just to be sure what you're asking, is this what you really mean? And the interviewer will say, yes. Then you can answer. If the interviewer will say, no, then he'll only clarify saying, no, this is what I mean. So some, uh, uh, paraphrase the question if you have not understood at all. Or ask the interviewer, may I request you please repeat the question? They will not say no. They will not say, I'm sorry, Pooja, I will not repeat. They are not going to say no. They will still repeat. I don't even know if you guys are smiling, actually. Are you smiling? Yeah, mom, but uh, I have a doubt. If we'll ask it again, maybe it'll make a negative point or something like you can't listen properly or something. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's okay. not ever happen. So, for example, you ask me something, Pooja, if I'm interviewing you, and it can also happen that I didn't understand your question. It can happen, right? Yeah, yes, mom. I want to ask you, Pooja, if you don't mind, can you please repeat yourself? It's hmm. a two-way two conversation. It is not one way. As much as a company needs you, you also need the company. Am I right? Yeah, man. True. Yeah. So, it, so the, when you go for an interview, you should look at it as a conversation. A lot of people get scared. They're not, you're going to talk to humans who has two eyes, two hands, ten fingers. Unless I have 20 hands and 20 fingers. Then I might get scared. But you're talking to humans there. And the easiest way to break that ice within yourself before going for an interview is knowing the interviewer. Go to the LinkedIn profile or any other website, figure out what all they are, how are they as an individual person, what is their background, look at the picture. That itself will kill your anxiety level. You getting what I'm saying? It just makes it easy. So you're somehow, somewhere, subconsciously you've already broken the ice within yourself, even before meeting the person. And that's an amazing trick I'm, uh, from my own experience I'm telling you. Even now when I go to my client's place uh, for trainings, I do a lot of research about that individual person before I go and meet. So that when I meet the person, I'm comfortable because I know 50% of the information. And the rest 50% will happen with the conversation. And it is just a conversation. Nobody is going to judge you there. You just have to be true and authentic. I think Mansi or one of you said that. You just need to be true and honest. Assuming if you don't know something, say, I'm sorry, Ashwini, I don't know. But I'll definitely do a research and come back. How does this sound now? Then lying and pretending and then you know falling into the trouble of cooking stories on that one lie. Which is easier to do? From the second one, yes. Exactly, right? That is, uh, I have been to, so even I have given interviews when I was looking for a job. So there have been situations where I had gone and said, I'm sorry, I don't know, but I will definitely do a research. And it is okay to not know everything. It is perfectly okay. Even I don't know so many things even now. But does that mean I'm not a smart person? Does that mean I will not get a job? No. But I have other X factors which will, which enhances me and makes me stand out as a candidate. So for example, Pooja, you might be good in making creatives. I am not. Because those are your strengths. But I'm happy to learn that. If I say that in the interview, it does create an impact. So what it shows is when you say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know. If what it shows as an individual person is one, you're very honest. Two, you're open to learn. Three, you're accepting that you don't know. And trust me, Pooja and everybody here, it's not easy to accept when you don't know something, especially with, uh, with us, especially with Indians. We somehow are very uncomfortable to say, I'm sorry, I don't know because we are always in that, you know, we want to show the world, I know everything. Nobody knows everything. 
if that is the case then i'm god it was a joke by the way you can laugh let me hear that laugh at least yeah ma'am sure sure right so it is perfectly okay to say you don't know but there's a way to say it you can't say i don't know then there's a way when you say i'm sorry it's a good question but uh, i unfortunately i don't know about it but if you allow me some time i will do some research and get back simple and just end the conversation there don't even get into debate with the interviewer okay that is one then how to close an interview how do you think and close an interview there is a way to close an interview also from your aspect from candidate's aspect now how do you think and close an interview anyone anyone would like to give an attempt no worries so how to close an interview is also a skill uh, but not very difficult very simple i will tell you how you can close and you can keep following that and enhancing your uh, self on those lines very simply you can say uh, it was great pleasure meeting you show the excitement uh, to the interviewer that you really like the job i'm so glad you explained the job description to me so well it has really cleared my thoughts now you can even say this while closing the interview and that has made me more interested and i'm very keen to take this forward that could be one way second um, do you think there are more rounds for me if yes how many more rounds when will the hr come uh, get in touch with me you can even ask these questions while closing the interview and we could also tell the interviewer uh, thank you very much for spending time with me in today's conversation it was an amazing conversation i feel so nice and uh, great to know you as well and in the conversation there so there are different ways you can close the conversation don't just abruptly shake hands and say okay thank you very much have a light conversation so that the interviewer will also remember you oh yeah she she did say that you know that she she seemed to like uh, uh, she seemed to have liked the job the way i explained so this way you actually making the interview also feel good oh wow i really explained her the job well that she really understood this is how interviewers think huh, by the way they get super excited when they are able to explain because most of technical people are not uh, are, not, are, are not always comfortable explaining in detail and when somebody does and when you compliment that to them they really like it i'm telling you in generic so th these are simple ways you know uh, which you can look for while closing the interview or simply you can say if you don't have anything to say then just uh, tell them uh, is there something more you would want me to know about the job If he says no, then you say, "Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me know uh, when uh, when will be my next uh, conversation, or when will I get a call next, and close the interview." Any questions on this? No, ma'am. Okay. Dress the part. Extremely important. Again, you need to dress for the role you are applying. You need to dress. uh keeping in mind the organization culture and values and the belief system very 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 important now there are some companies uh, like especially advertising companies they are full of casual environment so it's okay for you to go in jeans tone jeans you can go and give the interviews so before you just decide your dress code that's why i said in the second slide research on the companies extremely important that will give you a fair idea how the company is all what the company is all about so remember i'll give you one more example of mine in my past career when i was going for an interview with amazon okay and if you see the culture of amazon it is very 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 casual people come in night dress also to work there now i don't know i'm talking like uh, five years uh, four years back actually so now i don't know how the culture is there but when i had gone i still went professionally with a jacket and formal shirt formal pant i still wear in a formal dress code because when you're formally dressed you never go wrong you're never overly dressed you are just perfect especially if you're not sure what dress code the firm has and to find that you can talk to hr you can also check the company website uh, they have those uh, employee uh, videos right where employees talk how they how they work in the company those testimonials 
that gives you a fair idea what kind of dress code people are wearing there. If you don't want to do anything, then just call the HR and say, may I know the dress code please? If the HR has not told you on the email or over the phone. The best, otherwise the uh, no risk is wear formals and all. Perfect fit formal, not too tight, not too loose. Just exact your body shape and body type. All right. And most importantly, dress for the role you're looking for. It's extremely important because if when you show that, for example, if you're going for a manager role, you need to dress like a manager. So people start taking you seriously. Clothes speak a lot of, um, there's a lot of communication through your clothes. Are you aware of that? Have you ever heard? Or is it something very new to you? Anyone? Are you aware clothes are a resource and they communicate a lot? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Wonderful. I'm so glad everybody seems to know this. Yes, they are a resource. They do a lot of communication without you having said anything. So assuming in today's uh, conversation, the session today, if I would have worn a t-shirt, and uh, how, how do you think I would have come across? Just a plain t-shirt, you know, with a v-neck or a round neck and some jewelry on over my neck. How do you think I would have come across? It's okay, you can just say whatever comes to your mind. I'm not going to uh, kill anybody now. It's perfectly fine, just go ahead and say that. See, you need to try with me so that when tomorrow you go out in the world, you are, it's easier for you. So just go ahead and say whatever you have in your mind. It says like the presenter or the host has, I mean, no complete interest in sharing his or her views. Yeah, so it, it might come across as, does she even know the subject? Is she the one who's going to teach? Or oh, sorry, or talk? Right? Yeah, yeah. The training I had been, uh, long back though, he wore a tone jeans and he came. And the first uh, instance, when I looked at him, I was like, in, in fact, everybody in the class, right? If it go oh, easy, one of us, or easier trainer? Because when people look at you differently, and when they start feeling, uh, when they get that feeling in their mind, does the person even know the subject? That's where the resistance starts. And then it's very difficult to build that rapport with the individuals. So when you are dressing as per the role, you already subconsciously build a rapport with the interviewer. He's the one or she's the one. Because you're projecting yourself as mature, you're projecting yourself as dependable, reliable, trustworthy. Because that's what your clothes are talking. Not you. Then whatever you uh, display there in terms of your conversation, your skills, that's a different thing. But when, the, when, when you enter the door of the uh, room, your clothes have already done the conversation. Your impression has already been built there. And that takes less than five to seven seconds. So make it count. So whatever you wear, make it count. Go uh, wear the best um, professional attire, whatever you have, and show it to them. All right? Then comes following basic hygiene hair, nails, mouth, and body odor. Do you think are, they are very important? He is not going to come close to me. He's going to be, be sitting opposite to my chair. So how does it matter how I smell? It's okay, let me stink. Mom, the moment the person enters into the room, maybe the odor may spread. So it's really important to take care of your body odor. Now imagine Pooja, if you're going to interview me and I enter the room, stinking, how would you feel? Mom, maybe I'll feel like even you can't able to take care of yourself and your body, I mean, your... What would be your first expression? Oh my God, in your mind will be like, oh my God, I need to spend one hour with her. How am I going <laughs> to breathe? How am I suffocate and die? True, mom, true. You say that. And I have experienced it, okay? There was in previous companies though, a lot of people, they oil their hair so much, you can actually give the name of the brand. 
these are they see they, they seem very simple and basic but they are very very important nobody saying don't oil your hair please do so but there is a thin line which you need to understand so as an hr i have sent so many people back home in one of the companies i don't know if you heard about this company uh, lehman brothers it is uh, it was one of the investment back um, one of the best company a uh, us based company so when i was there the company was very particular very formal company so your dress code everything has to be very perfectly formal so i remember uh, in the few of the candidates had just walked in you know in slippers half tuck shirt very formal of course but the shirt was not tucked in properly they were smelling they were tired whatever i had to send them back home i'm sorry please go back come tomorrow and i gave them a guideline how they need to come to the interview so all this matters the hairs your hair we all of us don't have those amazing silky hair like how they're showing me the uh, ads right we don't have naturally we don't have but you can definitely maintain them for the interview nice nicely combed hair if you have too long hair you can just tie them back you know with a ponytail or a hair clip what will be comfortable with your face should be seen it can't be coming like this and you have the time you're doing like this in the interview you're distracting yourself and to the interviewer also then comes your nails right they, they shouldn't be chipped especially for women if you are wearing nail polish go for neutral colors when i say neutral something very light if you can see mine right something very very light which is not distracting or you don't wear anything it's your choice completely if you want to grow uh, if you want uh, nails uh, grown nails then you know either you somebody has come let me just yeah so if you want if you want to flash or uh, fully grown nails it can't be like model nails right they can be decent maybe half an inch and like how i have half an inch so these are very very basic but extremely important because everybody will be observing you in the interview the moment you enter the premises you are under scanner then mouth odor you don't want to kill the person with a bad breath but with your verbiage right let the person die the way you are talking because they get so impressed then killing them with a bad breath which one would you prefer bad breath or talking amazingly well which one bad breath you want to kill the interview with the bad breath no oh. ma'am sure we sure right okay so lot of us you know lot of men even women they uh, because they're stressed they go they go and they just smoke and they come which is okay nobody saying no please do if, if you know if that's going to de stress you well that's not a healthy one but yeah i'm just giving an example where they smoke and they come they don't even floss their mouth and that is one smell even if you're sitting at a distance one arm or uh, distance hand a uh, distance you can still smell that uh, that smell comes out so strongly so before you go to the interview or if you've had lot of masala food or you 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 are into smoking or any such habit first go floss your mouth carry that floss in your bag floss your mouth wash wash yourself clean i have also seen people carrying toothpaste and toothbrush i'm not kidding that's a fact because everything matters when you go for an interview and then pop a mint chew it for some time and then throw it you can't be eating a chewing gum and in front of the interviewer and um, i am ashwini das but i can't be doing that you have to throw the gum so that you feel fresh or you get those freshness not freshness you can just spray that in your mouth so that you are also charged up and in action and you know you're going and talking to the interviewer in full confidence so these are small things but extremely important then comes the body odor we all have our own different kind of odors right we stink all of us stink at times but if you sweat excessively we tend to stink it's a natural thing but how can you control by spraying yourself but don't overly spray that the other person gets migraine right so the perfume which you are using go for the softer ones which are mild in fragrance and gives a great feeling also 
I've seen some people, uh, you know, they, they, they spray such strong perfumes. I have actually got a migraine. I was unable to take the interview because I got a headache with that smell. While I love perfumes, but in the interview room, when the rooms are so small, that smell kind of covers the entire room and that can hit somebody. Right? Any questions here? Okay, next, smile, which I haven't seen anybody's yet, except for Prashant and Jakul and Pooja and Man Mansi, I'm not sure if you showed me. I saw you on the screen though. Yeah, except for a few, I have not seen anybody smile here. And I really want to see that, if you allow me to see that too. The smile is extremely important. Always have that smile, not showing your 36. Just a gentle smile. So that when somebody sees you, they feel pleasant and they feel nice to talk to you. Smile always builds a rapport. It's contagious. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. ma'am. So are you smiling because I'm smiling? It's okay when you're not. <laughs> Great. So smile is extremely important. It helps build your confidence. It helps in breaking the ice during the interview. It makes you more comfortable because you are able to connect with the person subconsciously. But when you smile, the atmosphere lightens up because the other person also is smiling looking at you. Have you experienced it? The tough situation can go so seamlessly smooth for you. Yeah. So have the gentle smile, you know, uh, which will show the confidence actually flowing out of them or from your entire aura. Then comes ask relevant and the right question. Don't ask for the heck of asking. Ask relevant questions which are relatable to you, relatable to the company, relatable to the job that you're applying for, or maybe towards your growth, your career path. We can't go in the intern and ask, how's the weather today? I have asked, uh, sorry, I have had people asking me, Ashwin, so how do you think the weather is today? How does it matter? It sounds uh, totally off track, right? Then it shows that you're really trying to break the ice with me. Break the ice in a very subtle way. The interview should not even know about it. So you ask the right and relevant question because at the end of the day, it's you who's going to work in that company. And if you're not getting the answers to your questions, it's not going to help you. It's not like, you know, only two days you want to go to the office and third day you're like, okay, I'm bored, I'll sit at home. It doesn't work. When you're going for a job or when you're, you're wanting to um, get that job offer, something has to motivate you to get up early in the morning, get charged and, you know, oh, wow, I'm going to go to the office today. And that can only happen if you have all the answers to the questions you're looking for. And trust me, you can ask the same question 10 times to the interviewer, they will not say no. Don't feel uh, offended, don't feel uncomfortable. Oh, how can I ask? I've already asked two times what the job description is. It's okay. At the end, it's your career. You need to be convinced about it. So you, it's you who's going to ask, the HR is going to ask, okay, are you okay with the job? No, they're not going to ask. They will ask you once or twice. The third time, they will not ask you. But if you have a doubt, you need to tell them. And also it's important because assuming you take the offer and the, the duration of you waiting and joining the organization, in that time frame, if you have any doubt, and you say, oh, I don't think this company is for me. I don't think this job is something I want to do. And then you call the HR and say, oh, you write a mail, I'm sorry, I'm not joining. You're actually burning the bridges. Because the industries are so small, every HR needs knows the other HR. That is one. Second, in the company database, they can blacklist you for showing unprofessionalism. So that means you're narrowing your opportunities. So if instead, be honest and say, hey, can you please explain me once again? Hey, you know what? These are my aspirations. Do you think this will meet my goal? 
have those honest and candid conversations. Nobody is going to put you on spot saying, how dare you ask? Nobody will do that. Because every company wants you to stay with them for a longer period. But at the same time, even you should be comfortable to stay that longer period, isn't it? Make sense? Hello? It yes, yes ma'am. Okay. And the last is follow up with a thank you note. Don't go chasing the HR. Give me the feedback, give me the feedback. No. Write a formal mail. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Could you please help me with the further steps? Or could you please help me with the feedback? Whatever, you know, however you want to phrase it. And then write a thank you note. Once a week, you can change. There have been candidates I've seen in my experience. Everybody used to call me and I said, it's so irritating. I'm like, hello, give me some time. Because as a firm, they also take some time to analyze all the candidates. So you have to give them that time. The HR will tell you, you know, please call me after two days or three days or whatever that is. And then follow up. By not following up, it shows that you're not interested only. So don't do that. Do a gentle follow up, get the information out and get going with that. All right. So any questions around interview etiquette? No, ma'am. Really clear. Wonderful. Now our next is salary negotiation. The most toughest everyone finds, maximum people is what I've, I've heard and I've seen. Why do you think it's, uh, it's so difficult? Any idea? Ma'am, Ma because they don't know that uh, the, com the how much company pays uh, for that position. Okay, fair point. Any other? Ma'am, because we didn't even know that we are selected or not. And initially, when I'm asking about the salary, it may, it may be confusing for the interviewer. If you ask for the salary well in advance, is that what you mean? Yeah, ma'am. Even though we don't know like we are selected or not. Okay. So typically, um, yeah, that could be one of the reasons, Pooja. Um, so thanks for sharing, Pooja and Mansi. So typically, salary negotiations are actually very tough. A lot of people struggle, to be very honest. But it's okay. It's not that something uh, must have still. It's, you will develop with your experience eventually. But there are some candidates I will tell you just by applying, they ask you, how much are you going to pay me? You know what, I'm going to buy a house, so I need X money. They actually talk to HR like this. I have seen with me people talking like this. You know what, Ashwini, I'm, I have a liability, I need to pay a loan. So that's why I'm looking for this kind of a salary. What should be the response of an HR? Please tell me if anyone can think. Can anyone think of? So the standard response what HR will give you is, we will pay you as per our, let me just allow my team. We will pay you as per our standards, company standards. As simple as that. Company is not going to take care of your liabilities. So please never ever say that I'm getting married, so I need more money. I need to buy a house, so please give me more money. I need to pursue further education. Please give me more money or any other reason you may come across. Please do not respond like this. The salary is being paid as per the skills that you bring on the table. It is as simple as that. So hence, when you're doing a salary negotiation, if you remember my second slide, doing a proper company research helps. This is where it helps. So assuming if you would have uh, read uh, any article on the financial statements, the quarter results, good, bad, ugly, whatever the results are, that gives you some indication, right? Second, go to Glassdoor or any similar website, figure out for that job family, what is the average range the company is paying? Then the third resource you could be using your own friends, assuming if they're working in the same company or competitor's company, Ask them, what is the salary range approximately? So when you have these facts and data in place, it's easier to put across your figure in, in front of them. And while you do that, 
make sure you are showing some level of flexibility making a comment no no i want only so much otherwise i will not join you then that kind of you know gives a very very wrong impression and hr will say fair enough so that means if i don't pay you this you know want to join me and we might stop the process even the adverse can happen so you can say uh, the hr might ask you so are you telling me if i don't give you x number will you not join me then you can say no but one like here and there i'm okay that's a flexibility you're showing which is okay so do a proper research before even quote the number and second important thing which you need to know is when when you're doing a salary negotiation most of the time hr will not tell you but when they decide on anybody's compensation right what they first do is they check the internal population you know what is internal population so there will be 20 such pujas in the company with same experience like pooja same qualification like pooja everything is same except one thing here and there so they will compare pooja shravan with other 20 pooja and they will check is she above 50% of the population or below 50% of the population in compensation and then they get to the median that is how salaries are decided i am telling you because this is how companies work and nobody is going to tell you this this is internal calculation how firms function there will be always a level of deviation but that differs how extra oh sorry what x factor you have for that deviation so the company is okay to pay you more provided you really have those amazing skills uh, where the firm doesn't have it as of now so when you're doing salary negotiation you need to keep all of these factors in mind also when you're applying to any company and assuming you want to join that company you have to also see the year on year growth if you consume everything in the first year of the compensation what will the company pay you in the following years is a question then because the budget is already been taken care of there's no more money to give you you get are you able to relate to this is it easy or you find it more technical anyone okay so in salary negotiation these are the parameters you need to look at all right then the only thing left is practice 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 keep trying if not if this doesn't work try this if that doesn't work try next but keep going keep trying don't give up before going for an interview do those mock interviews rehearse practice those basic questions tell me something about yourself why should we hire you what are your strengths what are your weaknesses these are some basic questions you can hr will ask you so prepare well in advance how are you going to answer them and keep practicing your uh, voice modulation your pitch your rate of speech your body language decide your clothes one day uh, in advance so that next day you're not struggling so this will fall all under your practice 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 right yes mom yeah ma'am now you can ask me any questions i'm i'll be more than happy to answer